How did one man go from a broke college student to a trading genius scoring million-dollar deals all from his dorm room? How does an absolute nobody rise to become the revered god of Japanese day trading? Before 2005, no one even knew who this man was. He was a complete mystery dwelling in obscurity. But after a single deal that pocketed him a staggering 2 billion yen in profit, he went from nobody to being a man whose name people suddenly couldn't get off their lips. The man in question is BNF, also known as the J-Com Man. Born on September 15, 1977 in the city of Tokyo, Japan, Takashi Kotagawa had an early childhood that wasn't unlike that of his peers in Japan. The 1970s at the time was an era often referred to as the Japanese economic miracle. The country's economy was on an upswing, marked by industrialization, technological innovation, and an improved standard of living for many. Technology was at the forefront, with Japanese companies like Sony and Toyota gaining global recognition for their groundbreaking products. And it's at that time, Japan's pop culture began to flourish. Manga, anime, and pop music gained popularity, not only at home, but also on the global stage. Things were looking up for the country, and BNF got to grow up in that bubble of economic stability. Growing up in a middle-class family, BNF's early years were shaped by the values of discipline and hard work. Japan's educational system is known for its rigor and emphasis on academic excellence and BNF's early education provided him with a strong foundation in mathematics and critical thinking skills, which would later prove invaluable in his trading career. As a kid, he never thought he would delve into the world of finance. The desire to do so would come years later, after one documentary changed his life forever. It's the late 90s, and BNF is just your average broke college student. Ramen noodles, anime marathons, and the occasional sip of sake. That's college life, right? But this kid was different. He had a dream that set him on a path to greatness. Back then, BNF stumbled upon a life-changing documentary on NHK, a Japanese TV network. The first episode was titled The Man Who Lost 50 Million, featuring none other than the legendary hedge fund manager and champion squash player, Victor Niederhofer. Victor was a wild card, a high-stakes gambler in the world of finance. He'd lost it all, not once, but twice. But here's the kicker. BNF didn't see a cautionary tale. He saw an opportunity. The allure of trading, the lifestyle, the freedom it promised, it all captivated him. Victor Niederhofer became his idol, his North Star. And what did BNF do? He adopted Victor's abbreviated initials as his trader name, BNF. It was a tribute to his mentor, his inspiration. Now, here's where he hit his first roadblock. BNF didn't have it easy. Unlike those lucky folks with YouTube tutorials at their disposal, BNF was in Japan, and trading knowledge was scarce. There were no online gurus, no webinars, not even textbooks on trading via a computer in 90s Japan. To top it all off, like any constantly broke college student, he had no money. Where was he even going to start? But he didn't let the shortcomings keep him in his room playing Crash Bandicoot or something. BNF was determined. That NHK documentary had lit a fire in him, and he was hungry for the same success Niederhofer had. No, he wanted to go bigger. He worked part-time jobs, pulling night shifts and weekend gigs, all while immersed in the complexities of stock market charts. He sacrificed every moment he could spare, studying price action like a lion waiting for the right moment to strike. He delved deep into the Japanese Nikkei Index, analyzing stock movements day in and day out. There was a rhythm to it, a flow, and BNF was deciphering it one chart at a time. With limited resources, he did what any true pioneer would do. He built his own strategies and theories about how the market worked. Two years of relentless effort, two years of juggling work and study, and the moment arrived. BNF had saved up $16,000. Now, it was time to face the real market, and it would either make his dreams come true or break him to the point of no recovery. Young, hungry, and disciplined, BNF was ready to make a living. But little did he know, he was about to enter one of the most challenging phases of his life. It's the early 2000s, and BNF, armed with his $16,000 war chest, steps onto the battlefield of the stock market. The world is still reeling from the burst of the dot-com bubble. And Japan, well, it's deep in what they would later call the lost decade, the period from the early 1990s to the early 2000s when Japan's economy experienced stagnation and asset prices, particularly real estate, collapsed. Nothing seems to be going well. Asset prices have plummeted by over 70%, and the economic pain is palpable. BNF, like any aspiring trader, expected his early days to be a learning curve. But what he didn't anticipate was the unrelenting bear market that awaited him. It was sink or swim, and BNF was determined not to sink. Unfortunately, his initial forays into trading put him face to face with a harsh reality, losses. Many years later, he would become the god of Japanese day trading. But at that point, he was still broke, on limited savings and racking up more losses than his funds could bear. 
The charts he had studied meticulously for years seemed to mock him. The market was a beast, and it showed no mercy. But here's where BNF's genius started to shine through. Instead of throwing in the towel or desperately chasing after lost gains, he did something remarkable. He analyzed his losses. He wasn't content with being a one-hit wonder in the bear market. He wanted a consistent winning streak. And then, like a lightning bolt of inspiration, he stumbled upon his contrarian trading strategy. It was like discovering a secret passage in a labyrinth. In a bear market, where fear reigns supreme, BNF noticed something peculiar. Traders gripped by the fear of losing even more tended to oversell stocks in a panic. BNF's contrarian and trading strategy was born from this insight. He started looking for stocks deviating at least 20% away from their average price over the past 25 days, which is known as the 25-day moving average, with 35% being a relatively safe level to buy. The key was to spot these oversold stocks and wait for the inevitable rebound. Sounds simple, right? It wasn't. Even with his newfound revelation, BNF still faced more losses than wins. It was painful to watch his hard-earned savings dwindle, but he knew there was more to learn. With relentless determination, he continued to refine his trading strategy. The crucial insight was that not all sectors of the market behaved the same way during a bear market. Different sectors had different patterns and varying degrees of deviation from the moving average. BNF painstakingly documented these variations. He observed that service sector stocks tended to deviate between 22% and 30% from the 25-day moving average, while post.com crash IT stocks show deviations ranging from 25% to 45%. For emerging stocks, it was a different story, with deviations running from 28% to a whopping 60%. This in-depth understanding allowed him to fine-tune his entries, increasing the odds of success. BNF realized that before making any trade, he needed to have a feel for the specific sector's behavior. It was like becoming a master of different dance styles, knowing the rhythm of each move. But BNF didn't stop there. His journey through the bear market was far from over. In 2001, he encountered a massive crash in penny stocks. It looked like a market-wide Black Friday sale, but BNF wasn't one to jump blindly into the shopping frenzy. While many saw this as a golden opportunity and started buying everything in sight, BNF hesitated. He had learned that different sectors had different rebound points, and he wasn't about to treat all stocks equally. Instead, he focused on the extreme cases, stocks that had fallen significantly more than the market average. Average. These were the ones with deviations close to 65% from the 25-day moving average. His intuition paid off. These stocks rebounded after just one or two days, some even doubling in value within a matter of weeks. By the end of 2002, BNF had transformed his initial $16,000 investment into a remarkable $1 million set. His fame in the Japanese trading community was on the rise, and he had achieved something extraordinary. But this was also when he was about to face an even more formidable challenge, a raging bull market. BNF was about to discover just how unpredictable it could be when the market changes course from bear to bull. The year is 2005, and the stock market is buzzing with activity. BNF, armed with the trading strategy he'd spent years refining and a keen eye for opportunity, finds himself at the center of a financial storm that would change his life forever. In an unexpected twist of fate, a colossal error by one of Japan's largest brokerage firms, Mizuho Securities, would set the stage for BNF's meteoric rise. Mizuho Securities had intended to sell 610,000 shares of JCOM, a popular staffing agency, at 610,000 yen per unit as part of a routine transaction. However, due to a technical glitch, they mistakenly offered those shares for one yen each. Panic swept through the trading floor as the error was realized. It was a costly mistake, one that would, with nerves of steel and a firm belief in his strategy, BNF made a bold move. He decided to purchase as many of these vastly underpriced shares as he could get his hands on, 7 1,100 of them to be exact. He was essentially betting that the price of JCOM shares would shoot back up from 1 yen per share to the actual price, 61,000 yen. As news of BNF's audacious buy orders spread, traders and onlookers couldn't believe what they were witnessing. They dubbed him the JCOM man, a legend in the making, seizing an opportunity of a lifetime. But the drama was far from over. The authorities stepped in, investigating the erroneous trade, and the legal battle began. Mizuho Securities was accused of failing to cancel the accidental trade of JCOM shares, despite the glaring and costly mistake made on their part. Authorities questioned the brokerage firm's decision not to void the trades, as it would have resulted in substantial financial losses for the company. Mizuho Securities faced a daunting challenge. Either honor the erroneous trades and face a loss of over 40 billion yen, or request the Tokyo Stock Exchange to cancel the trades. 
While the legal wrangling unfolded, BNF's future hung in the balance. He had bet his savings and possibly his reputation on this extraordinary trade. Two paths lay before him. Would he emerge victorious, or would this gamble prove to be his undoing? As the dust settled, Mizuho Securities reluctantly agreed to honor the mistaken trades. BNF's audacity had paid off, and he found himself the owner of JCOM shares at an astonishingly low cost compared to their market value. The profit from this epic trade was staggering, skyrocketing BNF's net worth into the billions of yen. An astonishing 2 billion yen, to be exact, that's about $17 million. The JCOM man legend was born, and BNF's name became synonymous with shrew trading and seizing opportunities when they presented themselves. But this victory was just one chapter in BNF's remarkable journey. With newfound wealth and fame, he would go on to face even greater challenges and achieve feats that would solidify his status as the god of Japanese day trading. The JCOM saga was only a stepping stone, and it's the next part of his story that would put his name in lights. BNF had spent the early 2000s navigating the treacherous waters of a bear market with his trading strategy, but as the years rolled on, so did the market dynamics. Japan's economy was gradually recovering, and the bear market, characterized by a prolonged period of declining stock prices, economic pessimism, and widespread investor fear, was giving way to a bull market. An extended period of rising stock prices and general optimism about the economy. BNF knew he had to evolve his strategies to thrive in this new environment. He began fine-tuning his strategies to suit the changing times. One of his key insights during this transition was the concept of riding lagging core companies. BNF noticed that as the bull market gained strength, investors often rushed to buy the latest high-flying stocks, driving their prices to dizzying heights. BNF's strategy involved identifying undervalued core companies, the ones that had strong balance sheets, reliable revenue streams, and potential for growth. He saw them as hidden gems in the midst of the bull market frenzy. While others chased after the latest market fads, BNF quietly accumulated shares of these overlooked companies at favorable prices. He was patient, and patience was his ally. He understood that the bull market could be irrational and driven by emotions, but BNF was disciplined and level-headed. He knew that, eventually, the market would recognize the value in these core companies and their stock prices would rise. When that happened, BNF would reap substantial profits. Reflecting on his journey, BNF once remarked, In trading, it's not just about making money, it's about managing risk and preserving capital. These words revealed his wisdom and experience in the world of trading. As his wealth continued to grow, BNF maintained a humble lifestyle. He understood that the allure of luxury and extravagance could be tempting, especially in a bull market where it seemed like easy money was flowing. However, he remained grounded and focused on his trading principles. BNF's approach to money was pragmatic. He believed in reinvesting his profits back into the market, compounding his gains over time. This disciplined approach allowed him to build wealth steadily and weather the ups and downs of the financial markets. While his name had become synonymous with trading genius, BNF remained a somewhat enigmatic figure. He wasn't one to seek the spotlight or indulge in self-promotion. He let his trading prowess and consistent success speak for itself. As he adapted to the challenges of the bull market, BNF's reputation continued to grow. His ability to thrive in both bear and bull markets solidified his status as the god of Japanese day trading. But his skills as a master trader wasn't enough to save him from what was coming next. After steadily riding high on his success in the Japanese stock market, BNF decided to expand his horizons. The allure of the international stage beckoned, and in 2006, he set his sights on trading the United States market. Lehman Brothers, one of the most prominent investment banks on Wall Street, seemed like a gateway to unlimited opportunities. In a fateful decision, BNF decided to open an account with Lehman Brothers. He was enticed by the prospects of trading in the world's largest economy and the allure of potentially massive profits was hard to resist. However, this venture would prove to be a double-edged sword. Despite his remarkable success in the Japanese markets, found himself facing an entirely different landscape. The dynamics of the U.S. markets were unlike anything he had encountered before. As he began trading U.S. stocks, BNF quickly realized that he was dealing with a different set of rules and market behaviors. The sheer size and complexity of the U.S. markets posed a challenge. Market fundamentals, economic indicators, and geopolitical factors played a significant role in stock movements, and BNF was navigating unfamiliar territory. One of the critical lessons he learned was the importance of thorough research and understanding market fundamentals. 
While his trading strategy had served him well in Japan, it wasn't as effective in the U.S. markets. Stocks moved differently, often driven by factors beyond technical analysis. BNF's initial step into U.S. markets was marked by losses and a sense of frustration. It was a stark contrast to his earlier successes. The Lehman Brothers gamble had not paid off as he had hoped. His losses were a humbling experience for the trading legend, a reminder that even the most seasoned traders could stumble when they ventured into unknown territory. Despite the setbacks, BNF's resolve remained unshaken. He made a strategic decision to focus his trading activities primarily on the Japanese markets, where he had honed his skills and achieved remarkable success. BNF's experience with Lehman Brothers served as a cautionary tale for him, and as the global financial crisis of 2008 loomed on the horizon, BNF's decision to avoid the tumultuous U.S. markets would prove to be a prescient one. While the world was rocked by the collapse of Lehman Brothers and the subsequent financial turmoil, BNF remained focused on his trading endeavors in Japan. As BNF's trading journey continued, he found himself once again facing bear market conditions, although this time with a wealth of experience under his belt. Japan's financial landscape had taken another turn, and the strategies that had served him well in the past needed recalibration. It was the mid-2000s and the world was grappling with the global financial crisis. Stock markets were in turmoil and economic uncertainty prevailed. For BNF, this presented both challenges and opportunities. One of the first things he realized was that the old deviation targets he had relied upon during the previous bear market were no longer as effective. Market dynamics had shifted and stocks behaved differently. The panic induced overselling that he had capitalized on earlier was not occurring in the same way. Adapting to these changing conditions required BNF to fine-tune his strategy once again. He delved deep into market data, analyzing the behavior of stocks during this new beer market. He identified subtle shifts in investor sentiment and market patterns. BNF's recalibration was not a quick or straightforward process. It involved countless hours of research, data analysis, and testing. He had to identify new deviation thresholds that would work in this altered landscape. This time, it was about finding the sweet spot where stocks were undervalued but not oversold to the point of irrationality. The challenges during this period were immense. The financial crisis had shaken investor confidence to its core, volatility was rampant, and predicting market movements became an even more complex endeavor. BNF had to navigate through the wreckage of the subprime mortgage crisis, the collapse of major financial institutions, and the ensuing global economic downturn. But BNF's ability to adapt and his unwavering discipline set him apart. He continued to manage risk meticulously, preserving capital and avoiding reckless decisions. While many traders struggled during this turbulent period, BNF found ways to identify hidden opportunities within the chaos. In the midst of the financial crisis, BNF's commitment to his craft and his deep understanding of market behavior allowed him to not only survive, but thrive. His ability to recalibrate his trading strategy was a testament to his skill as a trader and his resilience in the face of adversity. As the world slowly emerged from the depths of the crisis, BNF's reputation as the god of Japanese day trading was further solidified, and his legacy as a trading legend continued to grow. It was a time of unprecedented market turmoil, and the financial world seemed to be teetering on the brink of collapse. The global financial crisis of 2008 had sent shockwaves through economies and left investors in a state of panic. But amidst the chaos, there was one man who saw an opportunity where others saw only despair. With years of trading experience under his belt and a deep understanding of market dynamics, BNF recognized that moments of crisis often created the most fertile ground for profit. The fear and uncertainty that had gripped the financial markets presented a chance for the seasoned trader to make a bold move. In the midst of this turmoil, BNF decided to take a massive position, a move that would go down in trading history as one of the most audacious of its kind. He was going all in, with a level of conviction that few could match. The financial crisis had caused stock prices to plummet, but BNF wasn't worried at all. It wasn't just the size of his position that set him apart, it was the audacity of his overnight hold. While most traders were frantically trying to minimize their exposure to the volatile markets, BNF was holding onto his positions with unwavering resolve. It was a high-stakes gamble that would test the limits of his trading prowess. As the night wore on, the financial world held its collective breath, waiting to see the outcome of BNF's daring move. Market analysts and experts couldn't comprehend the sheer magnitude of his position or the nerve it took to maintain 
it. And then, as dawn broke and the trading day resumed, the world witnessed a sight that would become legendary. BNF's overnight hold had paid off in spectacular fashion. The stocks he had invested in began to surge, defying the prevailing pessimism. It was a breathtaking reversal of fortune, one that would leave traders and investors alike in awe. The triumphant outcome of BNF's epic rebound left him not only financially secure, but also elevated him to a status beyond that of a mere trader. He had become a legend, a figure whose name would forever be associated with courage, audacity, and the ability to thrive in the face of adversity. Quotes from market observers at the time reflect the astonishment and admiration that BNF's feat inspired. Analysts have called BNF a true legend in the world of day trading. Others say he's an inspiration to many traders around the world. BNF's reputation as the god of Japanese day trading had reached new heights. But it wasn't just about the profits to him. It was about the challenge, the thrill of pushing the boundaries of what was possible in the world of trading. His epic rebound during the market turmoil of 2008 would be remembered as one of the defining moments of his career solidifying his legacy as a trading legend. As the financial crisis gradually receded into history, BNF continued to trade with the same discipline and determination that had brought him success. At this point, most traders would take the money and fame and relax, but BNF wasn't ready to pack it up and back down. He wanted to be greater than the man who'd inspired him, so he would just keep investing. As the financial world marveled at BNF's incredible journey, his legacy began to take shape. His story wasn't just about extraordinary financial success, but also of unwavering determination, adaptability, and a passion for the art of trading. Reflecting on his accomplishments, it became clear that BNF wasn't content with resting on his laurels. While his name had become synonymous with trading genius in Japan, he had his sights set on an even greater ambition, to become the world's first billionaire bare bedroom day trader. BNF's journey had brought him immense wealth, and he used his earnings wisely. He invested in various real estate ventures, diversifying his portfolio beyond the stock market. His real estate investments included properties in prime locations in Japan and abroad, and they had proven to be lucrative additions to his financial strategy. One key element of BNF's real estate investment strategy was his ability to identify undervalued properties and opportunities that others often overlooked. Just as in his trading, he applied his analytical skills to the real estate market, seeking out hidden gems that had the potential for significant appreciation. Despite his substantial success in both trading and real estate, BNF remained a figure of humility. He was known for his reserved and modest lifestyle, choosing to keep a relatively low profile despite his legendary status. His focus remained on the pursuit of knowledge and excellence in trading. But the ambitious goal of becoming the world's first billionaire bare bedroom day trader was never far from BNF's mind. He continued to refine his trading strategies, exploring new approaches and staying ahead of market trends. His determination to push the boundaries of what was achievable in the world of day trading fueled his ongoing quest. Market analysts and experts closely watched BNF's every move as he was seen as a trailblazer in the world of finance. His trading philosophy, characterized by discipline, risk management, and adaptability, served as an inspiration to countless traders around the world. In interviews, BNF shared his insights and wisdom with aspiring traders traders, emphasizing the importance of continuous learning, emotional control, and the ability to adapt to changing market conditions. And as BNF continued his pursuit of billions, he remained an enigmatic and revered figure. His legacy extended beyond his financial achievements. It was a testament to the power of perseverance, discipline, and an unwavering commitment to one's goals. Despite his wealth, BNF remained humble and he didn't indulge in fancy cars or eat lavish meals. Most of whatever he made went right back into trading. However, he did splurgy on one thing, a top floor apartment that he bought for a whopping 400 million yen. And so the world watched with bated breath as BNF, the god of Japanese day trading, embarked on his ongoing quest, driven by an insatiable desire to achieve the extraordinary, to become the world's first billionaire bare bedroom day trader. BNF's story is one of relentless determination, unyielding discipline, and a passion for the art of trading. From his early days as a college student, he embarked on a quest that would transform him from an unknown individual, and now he's living the life he worked towards and inspiring others to take that bold move.